and truly will be awakening for our soul. My name is Hema Ramkisun, and I'll be your master of ceremonies. This evening, our energy will surely be moved by performances and also conversations surrounding the Save Soil movement. As we begin this evening, I just have one very little request, and I please will beg your indulgence. We're asking that you remain seated for the entirety of this program, but also no flash photography and no recordings during the event. Our first performer, when I say needs no introduction, needs absolutely no introduction. But it will be remiss of me to not recognize this great son of Trinidad and Tobago. He's the undisputed king of Sukkot, Marshall Montano, is a son of Trinidad and Tobago who continues to fly the red, white, and black internationally. Among his recognized titles, while well, they include singer, actor, record producer, as well as songwriter. His career began in 1982 at the age of only seven, launching his first album at the age of nine. This year, did you know he's celebrating 40 years in the industry? That is truly a massive milestone. Just recently, he was awarded the keys to the capital city. Marshall has shared the stage and has collaborated with so many world-renowned artists, including the likes of Ariana Grande, Pitbull, Drake, Rihanna, Shaggy, and so many more. As his presence continues to grow in the world of music, so too has his spiritual journey. He basically embarked on this journey, and seven months ago, that journey was propelled when he completed a seven-month yoga program at the Isha Yoga Center in India. Culminating the program earlier this year, he performed at what he described was basically the greatest performance of his entire career, the Mahashivratri celebrations in India, to a viewership of 140 million persons. And those persons consisted, yes, that is deserving of a round of applause. He's definitely taking Trinidad and Tobago to the globe. But Marshall Montano is also dedicating his time and effort to raising awareness about safe soil. He's taking this movement throughout the Caribbean and also to our Caribbean leadership. He has ensured that over six safe soil MOUs has been signed or have been signed so far. And I'm confident that this mission will not stop but will only gain momentum. He's using his music as a platform to reach so many people with a critical message, Save Soil. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause and let us welcome to the stage to show our appreciation, Marshall Montano. Greetings, sense of excellence. And everyone viewing, it's an honor to sing the message of Save Soil. Namaskaram Sadhguru and to all present Namaskaram to you I say Come on, come on, come on Say Come away Yeah 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 Come away Before it's too late I say, come away, come away, hey, 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 come away, come away right now. We need a change. Just imagine your body falling weak. Save our soil. I call from within. Let's come out Everybody say, let's come away. Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's come away. Yeah. Yeah. Let's come away. Yeah. Then we have to do. Challenge 
come away. Together we reverse the damage. Our life is just a link in this world of eternal days. And what we leave behind in this time and space is the stain or break with this shade. Everybody listen. It's no longer a tomorrow problem. It's about survival today. It will take Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago, and the rest of the world. It is my absolute honor to be in the presence of Sadhguru in Trinidad and Tobago. We've been waiting for a long time. <laughs> to all ministers, all dignified guests, and all conscious people about the soil, saving the soil. Are we here conscious about this? I'm seeing musicians, I'm seeing farmers, and I'm seeing my beautiful people of Trinidad and Tobago, every creed and race. We are proud to sing soca music for Save Soil. And Save Soil is the source of life, so I had to go to the source of soca music. This next song is called Touch the Ground. And I welcome on stage the daughter of the source of soca, Rashoti Eyes. Beautiful daughter, Marge Blackman. Give me something. Whoa, Come on, Marge. Now, all you, listen. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to sit like this. You can move, you know. Sadhguru, they can move. They can move. Na, 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 na. With my feet on the ground, oh yeah. From the earth, if you listen, you can hear there's a. I see one person standing. Come on, and it moves me. Yes, it shakes me to my core. What a feeling! It's a blessing, I am sure. Touch the ground. Don't you know this is where we are from? Everybody, come on. Hey, touch to the feeling. Touch. Hey. From the soil of a healing Come here, down to the feeling Touch here from the soil of a healing Can we hear you sing? Destroy our home. We destroy our home. And without a home, home, what will we have to call our own? Oh, okay. yeah. So join with us. Now. Join us. Let us start to make a change. Every movement is a move to rearrange. Touch the ground. Don't you know this is where we are? Oh, come yeah. on, come on, come on, come on.
is a dancer. We have to show we can dance. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. We here to say soil. Make some more to Brian Lara. Hey, could I hear the whole place sing? Everybody sing. One. Na 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 na. Na na na. Ho na na. Ho na na na. Ho na na na. Ho na na na. Ho na na. Peter, I see you. Sing it again. Clap. Ho na 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 na. Na 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 na. Ho na 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 na. Na 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 na. Ho na 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 na. Na na na. Ho na na. Yeah, I know. I know this is an evening of meditation and bliss. But meditation and bliss is also dancing. I had the absolute privilege of taking soca music to India. Thanks to Sadhguru. And this was one of the most magical moments of my life. Seeing people dance and be joyful. This song is that song. Listen. All you gotta do, give me a little faster. All you gotta do is dance. Listen. You just gotta. All you gotta do is dance. Like, come on. Oh, over there. Let me see you. Go so. Yeah, come on, come on. Move your body. Get involved. Brian, don't be scared. I just wanna dance with who? I wanna party over here. Everybody, just cause I get this feeling. I see bus. Come on up, look at Hey, I know I've done so many things in the past. Still, what we have is everlasting. Hey, I don't wanna bring those old. Come on, mommy. I spent so many lonely nights up on my pillow. Watching my life go out. Hey, hey. Now it's time for me to. We have to show Sakuru how we like to fit. Then take my blues away, even when you're standing still. I wanna dance with you like every night and day. Do anything for you, I will. Oh, no more lonely nights up inside this household. Come with me into the streets. Shut it out. This is our time to give it all we got. Everybody, wait for me now. Wait for me now. Okay. I'm gonna make you dance. I'm gonna make you dance tonight. I'm gonna show you how we just do it. Maybe I have to switch the rhythm to make him dance like this. We call this one Screw the Bulb and Pandy Dog. If you know this song, this is called Real Unity.
In Trinidad, we dance together. We love together. You need some help? If you don't know the words, I'm gonna get none other than Queen Shubati to sing this with me. Sing Shubati. been singing this song over 20 years now and she looked the same she looked the same oh man listen I dedicate this one to all the volunteers all who volunteer today make some noise our dream is to bring Isha here in Trinidad and Tobago and get more and more people to volunteer and save soil do we have earth buddies in here this song is in memory of 100 days. Play this. So listen, play low. Sometimes you look at this road. Sadhguru is young, still young, but on a motorbike for 100 days. Going all over the world, saying, save soil. All we need to do is repeat that. Can we do that? Do we understand the meaning of life? And how we have to save life below before we can save life above, but most importantly within. Turn it up. We're gonna save life within by saying we're not turning back. Same soil is here. We're going forward. Are you ready to go forward? All you gotta do is save with me. Save with me. We not giving up. Are we giving up? I see you. Everybody, come on, shake, shake the 
You see generations you know that it's life everlasting there's no giving up if you see them here and you see them joyful we're not giving up and the other way you're from I know I'm picking up South people a lot the only reason I'm saying South is because all they drive from far you came from far so I'm trying to make you feel a little better People like Brian, when they pass the lighthouse, there's well, oh God, it's so far. Right by the lighthouse. Isn't it? But really and truly, give me a little less delay. Really and truly, tonight they were going to say, Marsha Montano hailing from Separia. And I looked at it and I said, hailing from Separia. Well, that's not correct. I was born in Carinage. I moved to La Romaine. I grew up and became famous in Separia. Then I moved to St. Augustine. Right now it's Woodbrook, I'm residing. I also go to Toko and do a little farming. So I am a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, you know? My, my mom asked Sadhguru, Sadhguru, so where's home? and you my friends we are family more than that we are family and i know i didn't come here for this but i gotta do this right now i gotta do this i gotta do this i gotta show him what we do i gotta if you get up with me i'm gonna get up with you say sorry family let's go start up everybody hey every, this is meditation Parents, parents, 
Mr. Defrakers, Mr. Defrakers, all ministers, up! We do see skin, we do see color, we see strength, we see power, we do see race, one or the other, one see is breathing on this. On she will leave on if we fall out, Russian we go all out, we will never watch the family, then fall out, cause they be willing, we ready to brawl out. Could you make some noise for Keisha on pan? Shiva on tabla and tambour on converse. Chucky is there. Okay, enough bliss. The rest of the evening is meditation. You just have to be like this. It is such an honor. Trinidad, you made me very proud. Trinidad and Tobago, I'm proud. We have a sold out audience. And we have so many people crying on the outside to get on the inside. I think we should do this again and probably in the national stadium. Yeah? Okay. Now this is the anthem. You don't have to do anything but sing. Once you sing this song, you are an earth body. You are body of the earth. Thank you to all the mayors I'm seeing here. That's the mayor of the south, mayor of the north distinguished government ministers, everybody who's here, just say, la la le 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 le. This is it. Once you sing this message, it will be reverberated to the rest of the world. March, you gotta help me. Le, 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 le. I was so proud to have Marge Blackman's voice on this. Our voices rang across the entire planet. Are you proud of that move? So we go, sing with us, say. La 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 quench the fire of hunger. Unquenched hunger can burn the very world. This is a generational responsibility. Save soil. Let's, let's make it happen. Everybody, let's go!
you so very much. Namaskar, Sadhguru. All protocols observed. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. Somebody say, save soil. Save soil. Let's make it happen. Thank you. must apologize when I did my opening monologue describing this evening as meditation bliss and the awakening I should have also included you have to jump off your seats get your heart racing and there's going to be a lot of movement tonight um, before we continue I would like to recognize a few persons in our audience Senator the Honorable Nigel Depretis Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture Land and Fisheries Minister Depretis is representing the Prime Minister this evening also among us, and I think that uh, Marshall Montano also recognized a few persons, but cricket legend Brian Lara is also here. Give a round of applause. Now, if you follow uh, Marshall's social media, you would understand that there was a golf game. I do think, Brian, that Marshall does want another round, and he's promising to be a lot better this time around. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an evening of enlightenment, but also we have a number of causes that we would like to educate you about. And at this time, I would like to begin my welcome and introduce you to none other than our honorable guest, Sadhguru. Sadhguru is a yogi, and a round of applause before I even start. I must say, I must prepare for that every time I say your name, so I'm going to do a pause every time I say it. But Sadhguru is a yogi, he's a mystic, a New York Times best-selling author, and he's truly one of the most influential visionaries of our time. He's the founder of the Isha Foundation, supported by over 16 million volunteers worldwide. He has spoken at Google, Microsoft India, the World Bank, the World Economic Forum, the United Nations Conventions to Combat Desertification. He has been interviewed by Trevor Newell, Joe Rubin, countless others. I'm hoping a few Trinidad and Tobago nationals will be in that list tonight. Sadhguru has launched major ecological initiatives, Project Green Hands, Rally for the Rivers, Covery, all calling to address the urgent need to increase green cover, revitalize Indian rivers, and restore soil health globally. These initiatives have been recognized globally and they have been identified as game changers. They're establishing a blueprint for economic development and that it's truly economically sustainable, but also ecologically sustainable. Sadhguru has been invited by various organizations, including the UN and several other international agencies. He's spoken at the World Economic Forum to discuss global solutions to many ecological issues so it is truly an honor to have him in our midst tonight. Earlier this year, Sadhguru launched Safe Soil, a global movement addressing the looming crisis of agriculture soil extinction, bringing together people from every walk of life across the globe to stand up for this initiative. I also want to mention that when we look at the Guru, many people would not know that he recently concluded a 100-day lone motorcycle tour across Europe. A round of applause for that. Thank you, ma'am. I must say, even with all Marshall's working out movements, I don't think any of us can do that right now. But it truly was a mammoth movement, and it ignited 3.9 billion people. It ignited their concern for the soil and created an urgency for governments around the world to implement soil revitalization policies. I invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to watch this video and learn more, not just about Sadhguru, but about the Isha Foundation and about the Save Soil Movement.
In the next half hour, you're going to meet a man who has a devoted following across India and indeed around the world. While yoga and meditation are at the core of his teachings to promote individual growth, the work of the foundation covers conservation, education and health. And you'll find him astonishingly pragmatic on a range of very modern day problems. Let's meet Sadhguru. For the very first time in the history of humanity, we have the necessary resource, we have the necessary capability, we have the necessary technology to address every human problem on the planet. Even twenty-five years ago, we couldn't have dreamt of it. But the only thing that is missing is consciousness. Today, the Spotlight is on a project called Green Hands in India. We started a mass campaign and uh, six years I spent planting trees in people's heads. That's the most difficult terrain, believe me. And now in the last six years, we've been transplanting it, and that's happening much more easily. Action for Rural Rejuvenation is mainly aimed at rejuvenating the human spirit. This is an incredible movement that has started in Tamil Nadu. We want to see that this happens to the whole country. The idea is not necessarily about developing competitive sport, but the important thing is to bring the spirit of sport and revitalizing rural societies. Isha Outreach ko vars 2018 ke liye Rashtriya Khel Protsahan Puraskar se sammanit kiya jata hai. Sadhguru Jagdish Vasudev, Sansthapak Isha Outreach. English and computer skills are very essential to make these children come out of the hopeless economic and social pit they are in. If you could first tell our viewers what is the idea behind it, initiative, insight, which is more specific towards entrepreneurs. Whatever the nature of your business, ultimately it is all about human well-being. Isha Foundation, a non-religious, non-profit public service organization headquartered in southern India. Sadhguru has established Isha Institute of Inner Sciences in North America as a space for inner transformation and complete well-being. Surrounded by the serene forests of the Cumberland Plateau, Isha Institute attracts visitors from around the world for its unique programs and special events. We've engineered the outside world in so many ways. But we've done nothing about this one. If you want to know well-being, in is the only way out. This is what I want to teach you too. That is, you can be completely intoxicated without any drug, just on life. This is a shift from wine to divine. We are tracking a mammoth movement, an incredible rally starting from Kanyakumari, reaching up to the Himalayas, all in a month with the sole purpose of rejuvenating India's rivers. Every state is responding. This is concurrence and this is wonderful. I'm very happy that Sadhguru has taken up this cause. It should also become a people's movement, movement for our own survival, for the survival of our children. We are launching a campaign called Youth and Truth in the month of September. Youth and Truth, unplug with Sadhguru, ask whatever you want. I want to know the truth about ambition. Technology, astrology, self-doubt. What is the appropriate age to have sex? Why do we have to wear a tie or a proper dress code in, in our placement? For every one of you, your life is precious, isn't it? This precious life, where are you going to invest it? What is it that will be worthwhile today and worthwhile after fifty years for me to invest myself into? You invest your life into that. This will be a life of fulfillment. He has a different swag. He's kind of Buddha to us. Sadhguru has become this new friend of youth. If you have to describe yourself in one word, would you consider uh, wildlife as two words or one word? It's...
President Pranam Mukherjee felicitating uh, his Sadhguru for all his spiritual contribution. A hundred day journey spanning 30,000 kilometers from London to India as part of a safe soil campaign. Its aim is to activate the support of over 3.5 billion people to change the world and make it a better place. It's a great pleasure for me. These beautiful Caribbean nations are going for this first. Yes, this memorandum of understanding that we are signing, it will also bring some technical assistance to the Caribbean region. This is a historic moment because here is the first step to turn around. It is not about the motorcycle, it's not about the journey, it's not about the song, it is about moving people on the planet. Make it happen, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's our common issue together. It's not for one nation, for one person, but uh, we as people have to unite and uh, to solve this. All of us have been part of this destruction. The only way is all of us become part of the solution also. Yeah. Riding on to Italy. Italy is raining heavily tonight. The most dangerous thing has been the winds. Sometimes winds were gusting around 65 knots. So literally my front wheel was just lifting up like it's a balloon. Over two thousand years ago, this eternal city made the mistake of over-farming the region. The Romans of today should never make that mistake once again. And we are very happy that we are aligned in our message to uh, really hide the profile of soils. It's a message of urgency, but it's also a message of hope. So I'd really like to thank the Sadhguru for his leadership. Great. We should all stand up and make the most impact we can to create a real change in the world. Save the soil. And a super enthusiastic crowd committing themselves to make this happen. Save the soil is a very important movement that we support as UNCC. We need to do everything to protect it and uh, prevent harm to the soil. These days, the modern mothers, if children go and put their hands in the soil and come, they say, your hands are dirty. No, they're not dirty. You are touching the source of your life. I 
salute you and I respect your initiative and my full support. Dear Sadhguru, one of the world's voices and leaders of soil conservation and land. So it's extremely important, it must be a single point agenda, incentive-based agenda. I don't want this COP15 to end as one more convention with more paper and more paper. This must end with concrete action. You honor the country, you honor the people of this country. It's all about safe soil. His thoughts and philosophies goes across all cultures and religion. 930 kilometers, which means uh, probably we'll have to ride the whole night. My dear brother said, Guru, I would like to thank you for including the United Arab Emirates in your inspiring journey. There are no words to describe what it means to be back in India. Sadhguruji ne yatra ki duniya ko मिट्टी के प्रति स्नेह तो पैदा हुआ ही होगा लेकिन भारत की मिट्टी की ताकत का भी परिचय मिला होगा एज अ कैपिटल सिटी यू हैव अ मोर इंपॉर्टेंट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लेट्स मेक इट हैप मुझे लगता है उत्तर प्रदेश की 25 करोड़ जनता इस पूरे अभियान के साथ जुड़ेगी मैं ये वचन देता हूं कि मिट्टी बचाओ अभियान में आपके पीछे हम कदम से कदम और कंधे से कंधा मिलाकर साथ चलेंगे वी आर कमिटेड टू दिस कॉज एंड आई एम हियर टू से दट महाराष्ट्र अपने सोबत है ईशा फाउंडेशन से सोबत है सेफ सॉइल से सोबत है We will do everything under the command to save soil. So, uh, as I park here, it's 27,854 kilometers. <laughs> daily puja that for 10 to 12 minutes a day you will spread the soil message
ಸುಷ್ಠು ಮಯ ತವ ಮಹಾಕಾರ ಯೋಗೇಶ್ವರ ಕಾಲ ಕಾಲ ಯೋಗೇಶ್ವರ ಕಾಲ ಕಾಲ karam good evening hey i said good evening i thought you're not in talking terms with me already <clears throat> wonderful to be here in trinidad i I congratulate all of you because uh, the first leg of Safe Soil movement started from Caribbean islands and most nations of the CARICOM group signed up and that was our first step. From here we went on to London and the whole journey happened. So I congratulate all of you for being a part of it, the governments of these nations. for uh, recognizing the importance of what we are facing as a humanity. So what is it that we are facing as a humanity? Well, the human problem is uh, somebody is doing something very mechanical, can you ask them to? At the back, please. What is the human's issue? Once we have come here as human beings, our lives became complicated. Sir, uh, those of you who are looking at me through your third eye, I mean the phone, uh, it's, it's already on the YouTube, you can download it from there, sir, please. Yes. The human issue is this, once you have come here as a human being, life got complicated. If you had come here like any other creature on this planet, stomach full, life settled. Once you've come as a human being, stomach empty, only one problem, stomach full, one hundred problems. Because what it means to be a human being, He is not going to settle by settling the survival issues. A human being is always longing to be something more than what they are right now. Hmm? Whoever you are, you are still wanting to be something more than what you are right now, isn't it? Hello? Only if you are very sick or too shaky in your legs, then you say, Dear God, I don't want anything if I can just sit here, that's good enough for me. But tomorrow morning there's a little more energy coursing in your body, hmm, once again ready <laughs> for something more, isn't it? What is this something more? Whatever you know, in that you seek something more. If you know money, you think more money. If you know wealth, you think more wealth. If you know knowledge, you think more knowledge. If you know pleasure, you think more pleasure. Whatever is your currency, you're always thinking more of that. Some people think this is not good enough, I'm giving up everything but I want to go to heaven. <laughs> Nothing different because the longing within the human being to be something more cannot be quenched by philosophies, ideologies and pacifist teachings. Always you're seeking something more. If I make you, this is an offer. If I make you the king or queen of this planet, will you be fulfilled and settle down? 
Hello? I am talking to you, this is a question. Will you be? No, you will look at the moon, of course, our moon. We should include that also. If I give you the solar system, will you settle? You look at the galaxy, if you look at one galaxy, you'll want the other, ex other galaxy, because there is something within a human being which wants to expand. How much expansion will settle this one? This wants to expand limitlessly. If you want limitless expansion, you should not use physical means because then you will become a disaster. That is what soil problem is also about. Human beings want to expand but trying to do it physically, suddenly we find the planet is not enough. Suddenly it is… we can push it to a point where it could fall apart. But essentially the problem is the longing to expand. But that is not the problem. The problem is trying to have a physical expression for this longing to expand. If you want to expand limitlessly, you must find something other than physical to expand. Because physically if you expand, you will be in danger and the world will be in danger. So your expansion is not literally physical but in other ways physical. If it happens out of your physical body, we call this sexuality, wanting to be something more. If it happens out of your mental efforts, we call this ambition, conquest or simply shopping, whatever you like to call it. <laughs> if it happens out of your emotion, we call this love, compassion. If you do it consciously, then we call it yoga. The word yoga does not mean twisting and turning yourself and uh, ending up like a leftover noodle. <laughs> yoga means union. What does union mean? Right now I'm just checking, all of you breathing? I heard only twenty-three people saying that, yes. <laughs> all of you breathing, check and tell me, don't just say this. See, the problem is you're laughing because you think I'm… T uh, I'm joking about it. One day you shall not be breathing. Hello? Yes or no? One day somebody will check like this and say, it'll happen to you, it'll happen to me. Yes or no? Right now you're breathing, yes? That's a good thing. Your breathing means in some way you are one with the atmosphere. What you exhale, the trees are inhaling. What the trees exhale, you're inhaling. One half of your lungs is hanging out there. If you genuinely experience this, then we say you are in yoga. Anyway, it's happening. Whether you want to experience it or not is up to you. The question I'm asking is, do you want to experience your life or do you want to let it pass by? You must tell me yes or no because I'm going to bless you. Yes, no, silence, all three will be blessed <laughs> You want to experience your life or you want to just let it pass by? If you want to experience it, one important thing is you are awake. Hello? Oh, I see only the front rows doing this. What the back rows? Awake, oh nice. Because it's already 9 p.m., so I'm wandering in an island country. <laughs> you have to be awake, you have to be as alert as possible, all your faculties should be in place, only then you can experience it. If you want to experience more, your facul should, faculty should rise to a different level of competence. But right now, you know, in India, I'm in Bangalore. You know where is Bangalore? It is Bengaluru now, okay? You have to pronounce it rightly. And I'm there and uh, these are conferences for under twenty-five. For some reason they think I'm under twenty-five and they invite me <laughs> to speak. <laughs> so I go there and I'm talking and then uh, these guys, about twenty-five thousand, fifteen to twenty thousand people are there in an open ground. 
and a strong smell of marijuana. It's not legal, but youth. And uh, then they asked me, Sadhguru, you have so much influence in the government, why don't you make marijuana legal? I said, why not? Why marijuana? I will make cocaine also legal, opium also legal, whatever else you want, we will make all those things legal. Because what is the problem in go why we are going in installments? We make alcohol legal, then marijuana legal, then cocaine legal. Let's make everything legal. Those who want to die will die, those who want to live will live, what to do? <laughs> then I asked them, why you want it to be legal? They're all university students. You want to smoke up and go to the university? They said, why not? I don't know what's the words you use here. In India, smoke up means it's marijuana, smoke means it's tobacco. I'm smoking means it's just tobacco. I'm smoking up means marijuana. So I asked, are you… Sm you want to smoke up and go to the university? I said, why not? They will do one thing. I'm… I'll get you a ride on a small plane. You're waiting. But the pilot comes smoked up. You want to fly with him? Uh, they don't know what it means. <laughs> they say, oh, okay. Then I say, okay, you don't get it. You need a surgery. And a major surgery is you need it. But now the doctor comes smoked up. You want the surgery? Oh, I said, no, no. So you understand human faculties go down. You bring down your faculties and then you say, I am high. What is this? <laughs> At least you say, whenever you smoke these things, you say, I am down. I understand. You want to be down, it's up to you. But you want to be up and you're getting down, that is stupid. Hello? You want to be down, what to do, it's your business, unfortunately it's your life, it's your choice. But you want to be up and you want to… you're down, you're going down, this is not a good thing to do. It is like you sit in your car, you want to go forward but put it in the rivers and do this and go bang into something. This is stupid, hello? So are we against this, are we against that? No. I'm just asking you this. Will life become enhanced? Let's… let's use more specific examples. Suppose right now you're seeing, suppose your eyes became like telescopes, wherever you look you can see many things that other people cannot see. Would your life get enhanced? Hello? But your eyes became half of what it is right now, like it happens in the evenings for many people. And uh, it became half. Does life get enhanced, I'm asking? Hello? If you lower your faculties, will life get enhanced? Only if you heighten your faculties, life gets enhanced, isn't it? So having said that, to enhance life, I'm not talking about enhancement of life by adding more money, more wealth, more this, more that. This life itself can be enhanced. Everybody, you know, this hundred-day journey, everybody predicting on what day I will die. People making calculations, by fiftieth day he will be dead, no way he will survive. Here I am <laughs> Now, uh, motorcyclists, people who consider themselves motorcyclists, they're coming and telling me before, Sadhguru, this is okay, I'm sure you have the grit to ride, but your back will go, Sadhguru, after that you will not be able to active, be active in the world. I said, don't worry, this is an advertisement for a yogic back. It will survive all that, don't worry about me. Not because I have big muscles or something, it's just like that. Because you can enhance your life internally as a life process. If you enhance this life, 
everything will be better within you. Your experience of life will be enhanced. See, the reason why you want to acquire something is to somehow enhance your experience, isn't it? You want to have a larger slice of life, that's why you want to drink, that is why you want uh, sexuality, that's why you want to drug, that is why you want wealth, that's why you want everything, because you want a larger slice of life. Is that so? Hello? Are they in the evening mode? Those at the back. If… Uh, have you noticed on a given day for some reason you're very exuberant and happy, does life feel enhanced? Hello? But now you have fixed conditions, if I have to be happy, what are all the things that must happen in the world? and those things will never happen at any given time, and you being happy another time. So people have given up on this and they say, only in heaven you can be joyful, all the best. If you are so sure, you must go today, hello? <laughs> yes or no? If you are so sure everything is better out there, should you not go today? Ah, so you are bullying yourself like this all the time. Essentially, on one level, there are only two things you're looking for. One thing is, you want pleasantness of life. I'm going to ask you a few questions. If you say yes, no or silence, I will bless you with the same things that you do. You want your body to be pleasant. If body is pleasant, we call this health. You want? You want health? If it becomes very pleasant, we call it pleasure. If your mind becomes pleasant, we call this peace. Very pleasant, we call it joy. Your emotions become pleasant, we call this love. Very pleasant, we call it compassion. If your very life energies become pleasant, we call this blissfulness. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it ecstasy. If your surroundings become pleasant, we call this success. Only to create pleasantness of your surroundings, you need the cooperation of people and forces around you. To make this body pleasant, mind pleasant, emotions pleasant, energies pleasant, it is one hundred percent your business. Hello? You saying yes? Whoa! See, all the husbands and wives, it absolves you. They are saying for their pleasantness, it's they, it's happening from within you. Because all human experience happens from within you. Can you at least see me right now even if you're not listening, hello? Can you use one hand and point out where I am? You got it wrong. You know I am a mystic from southern India. This light is falling upon me, <laughs> reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know the whole story. Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Have you ever experienced anything other than within yourself? Have you experienced something out here? Everything that ever happened to you, pain and pleasure happens within you, light and darkness happens within you, joy and misery happens within you, agony and ecstasy happens within you. Anything that ever happened to you happened within you. At least what's happening within you must happen your way, isn't it? Hello? The world, the world will never happen hundred percent your way. Hmm? 
the world will never happen hundred percent your way. Yes? Some of you are already crying, oh, this world doesn't happen my way. It doesn't and I'm glad it doesn't because if it all happened your way, then where do I go? Where does everybody else go? Little bit your way, little bit my way, little bit somebody else's way. This is how the world is. Even if you're just two people in the family, even that is not happening hundred percent your way. Hello? Hello? Is it? If it's happening fifty-one percent your way, you have the controlling stick. Hundred percent if you try, nobody will be around you. That's the end of it. So nothing outside of you ever happens hundred percent your way. But this one person must be hundred percent your way, isn't it? So if this person was hundred percent your way, will you keep this person blissful or miserable? You must tell me I'm going to bless you. Blissful. For this one person, you want always the highest level of pleasantness, isn't it? What you want for your neighbor sometimes is debatable. But this person, you want him to be in the highest level of pleasantness, yes? But why such a simple thing is not happening? There are many, many, many ways to look at it. The simplest thing is, we have not taken charge of this one. We have not taken charge of our faculties. We are trying to rule the world. And out of this many consequences have come. It is like this, why this has happened is, can I tell you a story? Hello? Why I'm asking your permission is because when I say once upon a time, whole lot of people think it's time to dose, because that's the only time they heard stories. Can I tell you a story? Once upon a time. No, no. See, to, to tell a story and to listen to a story, you must be in the right frame of mind. If I say once upon a time, you say, uh huh? What happened? <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a potato farmer. Everything ha ha. <laughs> there was a potato farmer. One day he wanted to eat mangoes. He went looking for a mango tree. After much search, he found a mango tree. But out of sheer habit, being a potato farmer, he started digging for the mangoes. After some time when he found no mangoes, he dug furiously. After some time, the tree came down upon him. This is the story of humanity. In search of human happiness and well-being, we are digging the planet upside down. Not understanding, human experience is caused from within. Human comfort can be created outside. Comfort and conveniences can be created from outside. Peacefulness, joyfulness, blissfulness, well-being can only happen from within. Hello? But in search of human happiness, we're digging up everything. And uh, we have come to a place where responsible scientists in the world are talking about soil extinction. When we use the word extinction, you think of dinosaurs or dodos or something like this, not soil. What soil means is, it is the foundation of our existence. Even in evolutionary terms, it is the basis of our existence. These trillions of microbial species all worked to manufacture somebody like you for over a billion, two billion years' time, and it produced you and me. From micro one cell organisms to multi cell organisms to complex organisms, 
to this level of complexity. Of all the creatures on this planet, you are... Uh, I'm taking liberties. I'm saying you are the most complex, sophisticated and competent creature on the planet. Am I wrong? Somebody's proud, that's nice. Because <laughs> what I hear is most of the time when people utter the word human, they always say, they always say, oh, I am only human. Nobody says I am human. Hello? Is human a possibility or is hu being human a great limitation? It's the greatest possibility. Of all the creatures on this planet, millions and zillions of creatures on this planet, in terms of evolution, we are on top of it. We are the flower of evolution. Hello? But human beings are not walking around like they are on top of the world. going like this. What's the matter? Because they have taken their own psychological space as existential in the sense, they generate thoughts and emotions and they forget that they are creating it, they think it's happening to them from somewhere. This is a psychological case. Hello? If you believe yourself to be something other than what you are, would you be diagnosed case? Hello? Hello? See right now, this vessel, I suddenly pick it up and say, this is my vessel. Then you will think, Sadhguru seems to have some problem. <laughs> but you know, everybody says he's wise, let's listen some more. After some time I say, this is me, then you'll say, let's go. Hmm? Yes or no? Because if I claim this is me, you know you must go, this is the case. This is happening to you every day. Food appears on your plate, you say, this is my food, you eat it and then you say, this is me. This is the case. Hello? Were you born like this, as you are now? Really? You were born like this, now you become like this. How did this happen? Just the food that you've eaten, isn't it? So what you call as my body is a heap of food. Nature gives you the freedom to gather whatever kind of heap you want. What you call as my mind is a heap of impressions that you've gathered. Anything that you gather can belong to you can be yours, but can never ever be you, isn't it? Hello? If you think you're sitting on this chair for some time and after some time if you think, this chair is me, you finished or no? Hello? That's all that's happened to you. You gathered this body and then you think this is me. You gathered so many impressions and then you think that is me. You generate so many thoughts and you think that is me. You generate so many emotions, you think that is me. This is, in very basic terms, it's called madness. <laughs> but there are very sophisticated psychiatric words, you can find your own. That you believe yourself to be something other than what you are. For that, what is the word you find out? So because of this, just to sit here peacefully has become a big problem. To an extent, to an extent that today people are talking about, even the so-called spiritual leaders in the world are talking about peace is the ultimate goal of life. Such people will only rest in peace <laughs> Because I'm asking you, if you en want to enjoy your dinner tonight, even if you're not bursting with joy, at least you must be peaceful. Hello? To enjoy the food that you eat? If you want to enjoy the company of the person who is sitting next to you, even if you're not overpouring with love, 
at least you must be peaceful. Hello? If you want to enjoy a walk on this beautiful island, at least you must be peaceful, if not anything else. So I'm asking you, is peace a fundamental requirement or is it the thing that you achieve at the last point of your life? To do anything sensibly, at least you must be peaceful, isn't it? I <laughs> I was to speak uh, at uh, Tel Aviv. So I flew out of Atlanta. I am to land there in mid-morning mid and then speak at 6.30 in the evening. But due to some flight delays, I end up landing there at six o'clock in the evening. So I'm, uh, you know, I have this problem. In these last forty years, I have not been late to a single event in my life. So, no, 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 no. See? This also you think is a great achievement, this is a problem. You're supposed to be somewhere at a certain time, you're not there at that time, what's the problem with you? So, uh, I quickly change in the airport and I'm rushing to the event and uh, I'm famished, super hungry because I'm flying an American airline and there's nothing edible on that plane <laughs> And uh, I go to this place, this never happens to me, but on that day, I'm speaking at a fine restaurant. Miracles do happen sometimes. <laughs> when you're that hungry, that's exactly the place you want to go and that's where my talk is. Then I inquire, what is this restaurant about? Then they say, you know, some restaurants are known for the quality of the food, some restaurants are known for the ambience that they provide, some restaurants are known for the conversations that take place in that restaurant. It seems the most intelligent conversations in Tel Aviv happen in that restaurant, not in the parliament. So, uh, so I enter the place, already people are coming in and uh, people start greeting me and one person comes up to me and says, Shalom. I ask him, what does it mean? He says, this is the highest way of greeting. I say, okay, that's your opinion, but what does it mean? He said, no, no, really, this is the highest way of greeting. All right, but what does the word mean? Then he says, it means peace. Then I say, why would peace be the highest way of greeting unless you're born in Middle East? <laughs> in South India, if you come up to me in the morning and say, peace, I'll say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> So anything that you're… that you're deprived of slowly moves to heaven. If you say now peace, people say divine peace. If you say love, people say God is love. If you say bliss, people say divine bliss. Everything that human beings can do has unfortunately been exported to heaven. If you are willing, you can be peaceful, you can be loving, you can be joyful, you can be blissed out, yes or no? Even you're willing. So only seventeen people are willing. Are you willing? Are you one big yes to life, I'm asking? Now once you become a psychological case, now the problem is it is yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, 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 no, 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 no. I'm asking, as long as you're alive, are you one big yes to life? Being yes to life does not mean you have to do anything in particular. This doesn't mean you have to party every day, do some crazy things, no. You're already alive. It must happen with utmost willingness every breath. But right now it's happening unconsciously. Because it's happening unconsciously, even your thought, emotion, everything is being unconsciously crafted. Things that you don't want are happening within you. Things that you do not want anyway happens in the world, will also happen in your home. Many things that you don't want, but it should not happen here, isn't it? Hello?
What I don't want should not happen with me. What I don't want may happen around me, but it should not happen with me. If it's happening with me, essentially it means you are a psychological case. Yes, your thought and emotion, you have taken it too seriously. You don't understand, you are a, just a blimp on this planet, both in terms of time and space. What you occupy here is a speck, isn't it? In this seemingly endless cosmos, where it begins, where it ends, nobody knows. Neither the religious people nor the scientists know where does the cosmos begin, where does it end. Guess what? But nobody knows. In such a vast cosmos, this solar system is a speck, tiny speck. In that speck, planet Earth is a micro speck. In that micro speck, Trini <laughs> is a super micro speck. is a super micro speck. In that port of Spain is a super, super micro speck. In that you are a big man. <laughs> this is a very serious problem. Hello? Is it, this is a terrible lack of perspective as to who we are. What is our place in this universe? Hello? You are a micro, micro, not even a speck of dust, that's what we are. Many countless number of people have, like you and me, have come and gone. Where are they? All topsoil. This also will be topsoil one day. I'll bless you with a long life, but anyway, it will become topsoil unless your friends choose to bury you real deep, <laughs> fearing that you may rise from the dead. This happened. Anybody from Texas? Texas, Texas, no. No, before I tell a joke, I'm just checking. Otherwise I can change the… I can change the state anyway. So there was a couple in Texas. It was their dream to go to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem. But they got married when they were twenty-three, twenty-four. Then children came, one, two, three, four, five. Then they went to school, then they came for graduation, they were thinking of going to Holy Land and Holy Land, but children went through college and children got married and grandchildren came and Holy Land, Holy Land got postponed and postponed when they were over seventy-five years of age. When they realized grandchildren looking at them like a nuisance, they decided it's time to go to Holy Land and they went. Going there, they were overwhelmed. You know, Jerusalem, every cobblestone bleeds with history, all kinds of things. They walked on the street where Jesus is supposed to have walked, they went to the place where he's supposed to walk upon water, they were completely overwhelmed. But unfortunately, the lady had a heart attack and she died. You know, this happens. Then the husband was preparing to get her body back to Texas. Then the local people arrived. Then they said, no, 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 you're doing the wrong thing because your wife has done the right thing to die in the holy land. You wanting to transport her to Texas is a bad decision and the airlines charge you eighteen thousand dollars just for the body. And then local rituals, local expenses will be there. It's too much. We will do everything here for you because you're an American person and that too from Texas and you're distressed because of your wife's death, so we'll give you a discount. Sixteen thousand dollars, let's do the rituals, come on, let's go. The man thinks about it and then says, no, I will take her back to Texas. They say, see, it doesn't make sense what you're saying. But, you know, you lost a wife of over forty years. Obviously, you can't think straight. So it's all right, we will give you a super discount, twelve thousand dollars, let's do it. The man thinks about it and says, no, I will take her back to Texas. 
And they say, come on, what is this you're saying? You… you just lost it, you know? You completely lost your mind because you lost your wife. All right, just for your sake, six thousand dollars, let's do it. The man says, no, I will take her back to Texas. He says, what is the problem? They threw up their hands and yelled at him. Then he said, in Texas, dead stay dead. So right now, we have a life to live. This is our life, this is our time on the planet. Within us, only what we want must happen within us. If only what you want happen, would you keep yourself this full or miserable? You must tell me, I'm going to bless you. Blissful. Once only what you want happens within you, you will also, to whatever the extent possible, manifest what you want in your family, in your country, in your city, in the world around you, to the extent possible. That'll never happen hundred percent your way, but to the extent possible. But that is only possible if that is even… you can even attempt it only if you are not an issue, isn't it? In your life, there shall be many issues. The more active you are, there are more issues more problems. But I should not be a problem in my own life. Hello? That much sense we should have, yes or no? There are many other problems. The more activity you take up in the world, the more problems you will have in your life. It's okay. But if I myself become a problem in my life, this is a case. Hello? Now you're becoming very serious. On a certain day, a lady went to sleep. What did she do? On a certain day, a lady went to sleep. What did she do? She went to sleep. In her sleep, she had a dream. In her dream, she saw a hunk of a man standing there and staring at her. <laughs> then he started coming closer and closer and closer and closer. He came so close, she could even feel his breath. And she trembled, not in fear. <laughs> and then she asked, what will you do to me? The man said, well, lady, it's your dream <laughs> What's happening in your head is your dream. At least your bloody dream must happen the way you want it. Hello? <laughs> Life situations may not happen the way we want it. At least your dream must happen the way you want it. Hello? If this one thing happens your way, you shall be joyful and you will do your best with every situation that you have. Some things will work, some things will not, will not work. That's how it is. But as long as you're joyful, it's okay because this is all you have. Pleasantness of life, if possible, prof profoundness of life. When it comes to activity, impactfulness of activity, this is all you got. Rest is all made up in your head. Hello? Rest is all made up in your head. Right now, you may be thinking, oh, I'm a rich man. Why? Because you got something stored up in the bank or somewhere. But that's only in your thought. Suppose you forget. <laughs> it's gone. Hello? A ninety-three-year-old man was sitting in the park and weeping, heartbreaking, tears coming out. Somebody who was passing by stopped and said, Sir, what happened? 
He said, just two weeks ago, I won a lottery and I married a twenty-two-year-old very beautiful woman. She is fantastic to me. In every way she is great to me. And I bought a new twenty-five million dollar home. Everything is great in my life. Then they asked, why are you crying then? He said, I don't know where it is. I'm saying, whatever wealth you have, whatever nonsense you have is only in your memory. That doesn't… that can enhance situations around us. That cannot enhance the life that you are. Your life is enhanced. Only what is the level of pleasantness and profoundness that you hold within you? This is what makes you life. What your arrangements you make are fine, they make your life convenient. In terms of convenience and comfort, as a generation of people, you have more comfort and convenience than any human generation ever in the history of humanity, yes or no? Even what royalty did not have, ordinary citizens have today. No emperor on the planet could drive a chariot more than six horses. You are all driving chariots with two hundred, four hundred horses, hello? Yes or no? So in terms of comfort and convenience, never has it been so good, but still people are cribbing and going on because they do not understand the significance of holding the difference between what is my interiority and what is the external. Internal must be just the way I want, it has to be that way. External little bit your way, little bit my way, little bit somebody else's way. You know, I went for a golf game with your legend and the guy even won the game. <laughs> what can I do? Oh, I come all the way here and get beaten on the golf course. What can I do? That's how it is, but I enjoy the golf course. That he cannot stop me. That nobody can stop me. Hello? So this is all you got, pleasantness of experience, profoundness of experience, impactfulness of what you do. Our impact in the world is not determined by us, it is determined by the times in which we exist. Today we are doing what we are doing because of twenty-first century we are here. If you were here a thousand years ago, would we be doing the same thing? Hello? Not at all. So what we are doing is subject to the times in which we exist. We can't take full credit for those things, we do something, but it is the times. But how pleasant and how profound this life is, is absolutely your making. That one thing you must take care of so that this is not an impediment in your life. There are so many others, if you want to do many things in the world, you will understand how many types of in the impediments on a daily basis, how many people want to do things without knowing what they're doing, but they will oppose this, they will oppose that. Even if you say, save soil, if you save the soil, we won't go to heaven, somebody says. What do I do? Save… at least even if you die to bury you also, we need good soil, isn't it? If you don't want to live well, hello? Even to bury us, if this body has to rot and become part of the soil, soil should be alive, it's important. So I'm saying, life is just this pleasantness, profoundness and impactfulness of life. Even those of you who are thinking you want to go to heaven, you want to go there only because the advertisements have always said it's a very pleasant place. Right from your childhood, if they have told you, God lives there but it's a horrendous place, you will say, no, no, we will pray from here only, we don't want to go there. Because essentially the life that you are, you are looking for pleasantness of experience, both within and around you, isn't it? Around you, you cannot determine absolutely. Within you, hundred percent you can determine. And uh, as you earlier agreed with me, you agree with me that this is the most sophisticated and complex gadget on the planet, human mechanism. Have you read the user's manual? 
Hello? Huh? See, if you buy a phone, because everybody is showing it to me, their phone, new model, so I'm okay. <laughs> If you buy a phone, should you read the user's manual within the first three days or after three years when you're discarding the phone? When should you read it? Within the first three days if you want to use it well. The same goes for this, at the earliest possible time everything that you need to know about this you must know. Hello? Only then you can use this in the best possible way. Otherwise, just this very body and this mind, Human mind, oof, how much suffering it's manufacturing. Where is the industry for all the human suffering? It's in your mind, isn't it? Hello? Enormous amount of suffering. You can call it stress, you can call it anxiety, you can call it joy, misery, whatever you want to call it. But essentially, you have turned your own intelligence against you. That's all that's happened to you. If I can sit here and suffer by myself, obviously my intelligence has turned against me. Yes or no? If you are with me and you feel miserable, you can say, Sadhguru, it's because of you we are miserable. But if you are alone and you are miserable, obviously you are in bad company. Huh? Hello? You are by yourself and you're feeling miserable. What does this mean? You're in bad company. If you don't fix this one company, doesn't matter what else you have in your life, it's not going to work as a life. In the society, somebody may something uh, great things about you or ugly things about you, it doesn't matter. For this life, it will not work because this body, this mind has to work for you. If your physiology and your psychology turns against you, Nobody can take you anywhere. So, it is important that we address these things. There is a whole science, you can call this yoga, we call this inner engineering. To engineer yourself in such a way that this works the way I want. If it works the way I want, we are very sure you will keep it healthy, you will keep it happy, you will keep it wonderful, yes or no? Right now the problem is, it's not taking instructions from you, it is doing its own thing. Once it starts doing its own thing, then it is like a car for which there is no steering wheel, it goes wherever, you're an unguided missile. No great disaster has to come and strike you, you will go and strike something. Hello? So, this word meditation is floating all over the world, what does the word meditation mean? The English word meditation actually doesn't mean anything specific. It's a… simply throwing the word around. If you sit here with your eyes closed, people will say you're meditating. See, with eyes closed, there are many things you can do. You can sit here and do japa, tapa, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, shunya, samyama, any number of things you can do with your eyes closed. So the word medit meditation is not descriptive, not specific about anything. It's saying a general thing. So taking it that way, let's put it this way. If you're here, if you sit here, your experience of life becomes like this. Your body is here, your mind is here. Who you are is little away from that. A little space between you and the body a little space between you and your mind. If this happens, we can say you're in dhyan or dhyana or dhyanam or meditation or whatever you want to call it. Why this is important is to know what is me and what is not me. The moment I think this furniture is me, there is trouble, isn't it? Hello? This furniture also, this is also one kind of furniture. One day, yes or no? A sacred soil, all right? Right now it's yours. But many people have carried this before you. Today we are carrying it, it's ours. We will keep it well, we will enjoy it, it's fine. 
but it cannot be you, it can be yours. So we will do a simple process to bring about a small distinction between what is you and what is not you, what is you and what is yours, shall we? Can you all close your eyes and sit for uh, at least eight, ten minutes? Is that a possibility? Or will you look at me through your third eye? I mean the iPhone or whatever phone you have, hmm? Is it possible? Well, those of you who are standing there must sit down, those of you moving around must become still. Hello? Please. Those at the back, you must either sit down or stop moving, do something please. Hmm? Some volunteers out there, can they translate what I'm saying into English? Those at the very end, please either sit down or at least stand still and close your eyes. There are no chairs for you. So, uh, keep your hands open like this, loose and relaxed. Your spine, using the chair's backrest, keep it reasonably erect. There is no need to sit round on straight, nor do you slouch, just sit in a comfortably straight position. Those of you wearing spectacles, if you can just take it and keep it in your lap or in your pockets or whatever is comfortable for you. And. Uh, We will do a certain process, please don't close your eyes yet, one second. What we will do is, uh, with inhalation, we will take one word or one mm, utterance with you. With exhalation, we will do this, you don't have to say it, I will be saying it, you just add it to your breath. Inhalation, we will say, I'm not the body. Exhalation, I'm not even the mind. I will say it, you don't have to say it, but include that and make your inhalation as long as the sentence is, and make your exhalation as long as the sentence is. And in a very relaxed way, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation. Along with this, you do it. When we stop this, even in between, if I give a break, you continue to do the same thing. When I ask you to stop or when I ask you to utter a sound, you will utter the sound, ah. Uh. You simply say like this, with your eyes closed, you will do sound ah uh, with your mouth open like this, ah. Uh. When you do this, the maximum amount of vibrations will be in your navel or around this region. Just notice that reverberation and just do the sound ah. Uh approximately seven to twelve times we will do, just do that and after that you just sit there till I ask you to close… open your eyes, okay? Is it clear? Uh, sit with your face slightly upturned like this. If you close your eyes and hold your face slightly upturned, you will notice naturally your attention or your mild focus moves between your eyebrows. Just do that and see. A slightly upturned face, you will notice there is a mild focus between your eyebrows. Hold that focus, don't concentrate, please eyes closed. Hmm? Do not concentrate, uh, just a mild focus between your eyebrows. With… In, when I say, I am not the body, you inhale, when you… when I say I am not even the mind, you exhale. 
I am not the body, inhalation. I am not even the mind, exhalation. I am not the body, inhalation. I am not even the mind, exhalation. I am not the body, inhalation. I am not even the mind, exhalation. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. Continue to breathe. Continue to breathe like this. <clears throat> Oh. Uh. 
time slowly taking your own time very slowly please open your eyes doesn't matter what nationality we belong to, what nations we come from, what religion, what caste, creed or what kind of ideologies or politics we belong to, we all come from the same soil. We're living and eating of the same soil. When we die, for sure we go back to the same soil. So, uh, just knowing that if you cannot understand what is this source of creation, at least we understand we come from the soil, we live off the soil, we go back to the soil. That is simple enough for everybody to understand. As uh, we've been doing this around the world, to bring this awareness and make policy changes. Because you doing something wonderful in your piece of land and me doing something wonderful in my piece of land is not the solution. We need a global policy to ensure life on this planet exists. When I say life on this planet exists, the ecological base of this planet is in the soil these trillions of organisms. For example, 
today we have become possible, this kind of life on this planet has become possible because today the oxygen content in the atmosphere is around twenty-one percent. But some time ago, before this great phenomena where life on this planet learned how to cook their food from the perpetual energy of the sun that today we refer to as photosynthesis, before this phenomena of photosynthesis started, there was just a little over one percent oxygen content. You and me could not have happened. So I'm saying, from the smallest life turning green, then to the leaf, then to small plants and then to big trees, green leaf is in many ways the source of your life. That's all the biggest damage that's happened on this planet. Today everybody is busy in the name of environment, people are trying to catch carbon dioxide molecules in the air. I'm not saying that's not important, that is also a significant problem. But we are oxygen breathing life. Hello? Hmm? I'm just checking, hello? We are oxygen breathing life and uh, in the last thousand years, we have removed eighty-five percent of the photosynthesis on this planet, eighty-five percent. What is our plan really? In the last seventy years, sixty-seven percent of vertebral… vertebrate life is gone, sixty-seven percent. Eighty-two percent of the biomass insects are gone. Ninety-two percent of freshwater aquatic life is gone. What's our plan for our children and the future? This needs to change. This will not change by you and me fighting with each other. I'm saying this because environmentalism means go on the street and fight with somebody. No, all of us, knowingly or unknowingly, all of us are partners in this destruction. The only way around is all of us become partners in the solution, there is simply no other way. And it's great that the Caribbean nations are responding in a very positive manner. Though they're small in terms of geography, I'm glad they're large in terms of their vision. Thank you very much. I'm supposed to open up for questions. There was supposed to be a question-answer session. I'm willing to take one or two questions if somebody has a question without uh, getting your question answered. You cannot sleep tonight. If you have such a problem, please ask the question. Please. Is there a microphone? If you raise your hand, the microphone will come to you quick. Namaskar, Sadhguru. Namaskar. Welcome to our soil. Thank you for visiting us. I have a burning question. Where are you? <laughs> Raise your hand, where are you? Okay, okay. I'm here. Yes, yes. Growing up in Trinidad. Oh, you really grown a big voice though. <laughs> Always thought I knew what Sanatan Dharma means. I'm confused after listening to you on <laughs> YouTube. Can you shed some light on this, please? Sanatan Dharma. <laughs> oh. See, the word, the word Sanatan means eternal. So we are talking about Dharma means a law. We are talking about those aspects of life that can be considered eternal. Is your body eternal? Hello? No. Is your… this one eternal? No. Family eternal? No. Nation eternal? No. So what is this eternal? So something that's beyond physicality is eternal. So. 
a society which invested itself in that aspect of life, called itself a sanatan because their involvement is not just with the physical, they want to know what is beyond the physical. Not willing to just believe something. When I say believe something, see in the world there are atheists and theists. An atheist means he believes there is no God. A theist means he believes there is God. Both of them believe something, but they think they are very different. Both of them believe something that they don't really know about. Yes, when you don't have the courage, not the commitment to know what is the truth about my existence, you can jump into some belief. What is it that you believe? Depends where you are born. If you are born in one kind of society, you believe one thing. If you are born in another kind of society, you believe another thing. If we work hard enough on you right from your childhood, we can make you believe just about anything. Yes or no? We just have to work hard on you. We can make you believe just about anything. So what you believe is of social consequence, is also of some psychological significance, but existentially it means nothing. So if you are on sanatan, you are a sanatani means you are in pursuit of the existential. You are not interested in just the physiological or the psychological or the social aspects of life. You are interested in the existential, that which is beyond this. If something is eternal, it also has to be absolutely inclusive. There is no way. There is… this and that is not eternal. This and that will come and go, you and me will come and go. But that which is eternal neither comes nor goes, that means naturally it is also all-inclusive. So one thing that everybody who identifies or at least believes that they are san in the sanatan dharma must understand the only way you can call yourself anything sanatan is you must be all-inclusive, there is simply no other way. You and me is not sanatan, it's not eternal. There is something which is eternal, which is the source of creation. The whole effort is to bring that into your experience, not just to believe, not just to read about it, not just to worship it, but to know it experientially. So when this longing becomes your way, then somebody formulates, okay, this is the way to approach it. That step-by-step -step process becomes dharma or the law or the method with which you get there. So how do you get to the beyond? How do you get to that which is beyond perishable aspects of body and mind? Well, just now what you did, little bit, this is not… this is just a very small thing, a better version of this called Isha Kriya is there on the app. You can download the app on your phone and do it, it doesn't cost you anything. Every day twelve, fifteen minutes of meditation will make a big difference. If you sit here, if you clearly experience, not think, not thinking it up, clearly experience that there is a space between you and your body, between you and your mind, you are Sanatan, you are eternal because what is perishable with you is your body, your physiological and psychological and social processes are perishable. But that which is the basis of this life is beyond that. There is an intelligence beyond the body. Your body was created from within you or did you plaster it from outside? Hello? From internally. So there is an intelligence within you which can create something so complex. From what? From bananas that you ate. Hello? Just about anything that you eat becomes human body within a few hours, isn't it? There is an intelligence within you which is the very source of creation. If the source of creation is within you and if you are not in touch with it, I think it's a crime. If it's somewhere up in the heaven and you don't want to go there, that's up to you. I don't want to go there too. But if it's within you, 
and you don't know it, this is a crime. So this is what Sanatan means, that you're always striving to be in touch with that which is eternal, because you clearly understand your body, physical body and your psychological structures and the social structures that we create, which all become so real at one point, that we start forgetting that we are even mortal. Hello? We are just forgetting that we are mortal. So you must do one thing as a first step towards being a sanatani. The first thing you have to do is tomorrow morning if you wake up. No, I'm not joking. Every… every day, approximately hundred and fifty to hundred and seventy-five thousand people don't wake up tomorrow morning. Natural death happens on the planet. We always think it happens to somebody else. No, no, it will happen to you and me. Hello? I will bless you with a long life. But it's possible that you and me could die today. Hello? We are not wishing it, but possible? Hello? Possible. We don't want it, that's a different thing, but it's possible. So if you happen to wake up tomorrow morning, One thing you must do is, you check, you're still here, alive? If you're alive, just give yourself one big smile. Hello? If you're alive, if you… if you're not alive tomorrow morning, I'll pa excuse you, it's okay. You can carry a stiff face. If you're alive, one big smile. Why Sadhguru, what happened? Hare, you're alive, that's the biggest thing in your life. Tell me, what is the greatest thing that's happening to you? You're alive right now, isn't it? Everything else is secondary. Yes or no? Everything else is secondary. The most important thing that's happening to you right now is life itself. So if you are alive tomorrow morning, will you give yourself one big smile? Hello? To yourself. And uh, whenever you look at the watch, whenever you look at the clock or watch, oh, ten twenty, and I'm still alive. Hello? One big smile. Because what is ticking away here is not the clock. What is ticking away is your life. Hello? What is ticking away is your life. From now on, you must do this in the Caribbean island, you must make sure everybody does this. Whenever they check the time, Still alive. <laughs> Isn't it fantastic? Still alive? This is the most fantastic thing that's happening to you. Next time I come, I want to see more smiles. I saw, I thought the island people means like, because I, the only, the only Trini I saw is Mashal. I thought everybody's. Ah, come. Everybody's going like this. Next time I come, I want to see some big smiles. Hello? It doesn't matter what the hell is happening in your life. It doesn't matter what the hell is happening with your life. If you're alive, let's do that. Uh, I'm okay, but uh, this… Okay, this girl, please. She needs a microphone. Here, here, she needs a microphone. Uh, we'll close with this question because I think people, I don't want to hold you up. Hello? On behalf of everyone here, we've all been very impressed by you, and not just by your golf skills. Um, we've listened to you speak tonight on the power of speaking up on this cause, creating awareness, holding people in power accountable. Um, but all of these actions are very interdependent, meaning 
they depend, the success of them depends on someone else. We've also spoken tonight a lot about autonomy. So I'm wondering, I'm not a farmer, I'm not a scientist, and I'm not a politician. I'm wondering what can I do on an individual level to save soil, what we can all do. See, the thing you're looking at, what is that? I had to write notes because I, I was know, nervous. I'm asking what is that? A uh, phone. Phone. So it is no more a phone, it's a powerhouse. Today, what's your name, little girl? My name is Mickey. Huh? Mickey. What? Mickey. Really? Mickey. <laughs> Mickey. Oh, Mickey. Okay. <laughs> like the mouse. Okay. Uh, Mickey, today, for the first time in the history of humanity, you have this power with this little thing that you're holding in your hand. You alone. If you make up your mind, in the next six months to one year, just you can reach the whole world. Is it possible or not? The question is only, is there that much commitment or not? Do you have that much love in your heart to put it into something? Or you're just like that one or two days and then gone? There's no commitment about anything. So right now what we are talking about is, this is not just one more problem. There are many ways to describe this. One simple thing is this, according to UNFAO, right now twenty-seven thousand species of microorganisms, species of microorganisms are going extinct per year. Twenty-seven thousand species, you heard it right. So this is a slide. This slide is continuing unabated. If it continues like this, it is estimated somewhere in the next twenty-five to forty years. This slide can get into a tumble. Once it becomes a tumble, there is nothing you can do or nothing I can do. The important thing is to arrest this slide and push it back. It's very much possible, it's not an impossible task, nor does it need some great rocket science to do it, nor do you need enormous financial outlays to do it. It just takes the right direction and the relentless commitment to get there. If we get the governments of every nation to make policies to revive their soil, in a matter of anywhere between four to eight years, this problem can be completely mitigated. It is not within… it is not beyond our reach. This is a great challenge right now because if it goes like this, it will become an absolute disaster. So as a generation, we have this. We have a huge challenge in front of us. At the same time, we are privileged because we are the last generation which has this opportunity to turn this around. If we don't turn this around, uh, scientists, some of them are making bizarre predictions. They're saying, by 2060, if we don't do anything, and it goes like that, it is possible that twenty percent of the human population will die in terrible ways of starvation and lack of water. By 2032, we are expecting 3.5 billion people will be water-stressed, 1.3 billion people will be migrating. And when migrations happen in unplanned ways, forced migrations because of lack of food and water, the worst thing will always happen to the women and children, always. They take the worst. So, these things are not far away, it is within our life in the matter of ten to fifteen years' time. Right now, our attitude has been, but I have a rich piece of land, so why do I care? But you need to understand, microbial life is a global phenomenon. If it starts collapsing, it starts collapsing everywhere, it doesn't matter who did it. It starts collapsing means it starts collapsing everywhere, it can't be preserved here and there, no. It is important that the microbial life is on in a big way in the soil. Right now, just to give you a perspective, in the next four years it's expected over 107 species of birds will go extinct simply because they don't have enough worms and insects to eat. Because you're using vermicide, insecticide, pesticide, every side, this is suicide. Yes. So, 
What can I do? That's a great question. The simple thing right now is to keep the message up because we are working with the governments. The government should feel comfortable that the people are with them. Because for any democratic nation, we have given a term of four to five years. What's your term here? Five. So in some countries it's four years, in some countries it's five years. You give somebody a five-year mandate and what will they naturally do? They will try to produce results within those five years because again the election is coming and they have to answer, they're answerable to the people. So how do you expect them to take policy decisions which may take eight or ten or twelve years to bear fruit? They can take these decisions and they can invest in this direction only if at least sixty percent of the adult population clearly expresses they want long-term well-being of this nation, they are concerned about the future of their children, this expression must come. Tell me one nation on this planet where sixty percent of the adult population has expressed this, have they? No, they will talk in tea parties here and there. They will ask for uh, gas price reduction, they will ask for income tax one percent reduction, they will get those kind of things. Has anywhere in any nation, sixty percent of the population stood up and clearly said, we are concerned about the future of this nation and our children, have they said this? We are living like we are the last generation. So do not think enhancing the message is a small thing, it is a very, very important thing. If governments have to make policies, you need people. First of all, as a young person, I want to tell you and remind you, not that you do not know, but I want to remind you, there is no government. In a democratic society, you are the government. There is no separate government. Somebody has volunteered to do the dirty work for you. That's all it is. Well, we may go about giving, uh, you know, endlessly people can talk about, oh, governments are corrupt, politicians are like this, like that. But I'm telling you, I'm not trying to protect them or not protect them. I'm saying in a democratic society, in any given society, I'm not just talking about your country, because this is a pastime in every nation for people to talk, all politicians are corrupt, they're rogues, they're this, they're that. If you hand over, no, no, if you hand over your country to people who you think are rogues, what are you? What are you? So the future of this nation, the future of your children, you hand it over to people who you think are rogues and you sit back and go on talking somewhere in a useless place. What is the point? Bring it, bring it to the awareness. This is not a protest. This is not an agitation. This is not about expressing your anger or resentment. This is an expression of our love and responsibility for the life that we are and the life that's around us and the life that must be beyond us. So, please express that every day. I am telling you, every one of you, Every one of you have a phone, isn't it? Hello? Yeah. You can send some silly messages on it, it's okay. It's called a smartphone, but it does a lot of silly things. That's up to you, I'll leave that to you. Every day, fifteen minutes a day, can you just say something about your concern for soil, environment, works around you, about the life on this planet? Because it's under threat, it's no more a joke. It's not a tomorrow's problem, it's a today's problem. It's an existential problem. It is not about global warming, about this, that. Fundamentally, all these things that you're talking about is just our way of doing things unfortunately has become like this. If we are… if you are dying, we will come and see and say, oh, he's got fever. Then we will say, what is the fever? Oh, his liver is rotting. Then we say, what? How to stop the liver rot? We will go about it. If you can't stop it, then we say he's dead. All right? We are always looking at the symptoms. Even here, your global warming, your climate change is a symptom. It's not the cause. It is not the source of the problem. It is a symptom. 
you're watching the symptom, yes, that is important, I'm not saying it's not important, but the source is this. If you do not understand what I'm saying, tomorrow morning you go out when the sun is up, go touch the soil where it is ploughed and left open for a month. What is the temperature? You don't need any meter, just with your hand. Just go and touch the same soil in grassy areas, what is the temperature? Go and touch the soil under a bush, go and touch the soil under a big tree, what is the temperature? The range will be between eight to twelve degrees centigrade. This is global warming, what else is it? It's right here, you don't need any science. It is happening, if you are alive to it, it is always visible to you. People keep asking me, Sadhguru, how do you know all this? Are you a scientist? No, I am a worm on this planet, I've been crawling on this planet for six and a half decades. How come I don't know what's happening around me? Because everybody is living in their own world, I live in this world. You must also live in this world because what you think is your world is just an imaginary nonsense. This is the only world you and me can live. Hello? This is the only world we can live here. It seems there are some three hundred planets just like Earth, some of them ten times bigger than Earth, some three million light years away. If you want to make the journey, all the best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Wonderful. Thank you very much. This very body is soil. My body, your body, everybody is just soil body. of soil is it turns death into life. Depleted soils will not quench the fire of hunger. Unquenched hunger can burn the very world. This is a generational responsibility. Save soil, let's make it happen. <laughs>